A string of robberies has been playing a convenience store in Lynn. In less than three weeks, the clerk has been robbed at knife point three times, all in broad daylight. The masked robber brandishes a knife during each holdup. It's definitely not the norm to have the same store robbed three times in such a short period. The terrified clerk has been transferred to a different store by the owner, who is at a loss for solutions. I never see like that. It's happened like that. It's continue. And uh, not even the nighttime, this is the daytime. Another recent convenience store robbery in the vicinity that involved an unmasked suspect. Obviously, we have somebody who we believe to be one person out there robbing the store uh, at least three times uh, in the last couple weeks. So it's obviously a, a public safety concern for us. Authorities are concerned that the robber may become increasingly violent due to their brazen daylight attacks. Police suspect a link string of robberies targeting small businesses in Santa Clarita Valley, with Abe's Bond Shop on Main Street being one of the recent attempts. While they escaped empty-handed from Abe's, surveillance footage captured the trio browsing the jewelry case. The clerk, recognizing them from a KTA news report about a stolen diamond ring, alerted the owner. Startled, the suspects fled the store, followed by the owner, as seen on video. I can't believe that, you know, they, they're continuing to do this to small businesses and continuing to you know, take what doesn't belong to them. The footage also reveals a possible getaway vehicle, a gray Honda minivan trailing them. This incident connects with the theft of a unique $40,000 diamond ring from a jewelry store in Sagas. The owner of the jewelry store claims the two women in the pawn shop footage are the same ones who robbed him, identified by a distinctive pattern jacket worn in both cases. A third unidentified male accompanied the women. Authorities are concerned about the group's potential to target more businesses. The owner of the jewelry store has offered a $1,000 reward for information leading to the suspect's arrest. Ioni Jones, 18, has been apprehended and charged with robbery in connection with a recent heist at Beauty Plug Supply Store on West Commercial Boulevard in Tamarack. Surveillance footage reportedly shows Jones participating in the crime. Authorities allege she was part of a group that Pepper sprayed an employee to steal merchandise. Jones is also facing 15 charges from unrelated cases. She is currently jailed on a $25,000 bond. Memphis police are searching for a suspect who stole multiple TVs from a Walmart on Elvis Presley Boulevard on February 28th. Security footage captured the culprit, disguised as a Walmart employee, clad in a blue store shirt. The man cleverly accessed a restricted stock area and selected TVs from various brands. He then devised a two-part plan. First, he removed some TVs through the rear dock door and placed them along the exterior wall and perimeter fence. Returning to the store, he re-emerged as a passenger in a blue mid-2000s Jeep Grand Cherokee, driven by a woman in a red, white, and blue jacket. Together, they loaded the TVs into the Jeep before driving away. However, their greed didn't stop there. The duo returned shortly after for a second round, loading even more stolen TVs into their getaway vehicle. Authorities urge anyone with information about the suspects or the vehicle to contact the Memphis Police Department. This bizarre video captures a woman emptying her entire shopping cart. A man, amused by the sight, films her and asks why she's doing it. Why did you do that? While the woman laughs and explains she simply didn't need the items, the situation likely left store staff with a different perspective. A frightening encounter at a Wendy's drive through in Lake Balboa has been captured on video. The footage, reportedly filmed by an employee, shows a man brandishing a large knife outside the window.
This incident highlights the dangers faced by fast food workers. The employee's decision to record the encounter demonstrates the potential for such situations to escalate quickly. The Philadelphia Police Department is seeking the public's assistance in identifying two individuals suspected of armed robbery. On October 25th, a robbery occurred at the Millennium Beauty Store in Southwest Philadelphia. Investigators believe the suspect spent several minutes inside the store before the incident. According to police reports, the suspects used a weapon and pepper spray during the robbery and escaped with approximately $15,000. A customer of the Beauty Plug Beauty Supply store in Tamarack was considering a high-value wig on a Sunday morning. After a lengthy consultation, the customer left the store. Let's see something like this. This human hair right here? However, surveillance footage captured them taking merchandise without paying and fleeing in a silver sedan. It was a huge loss for us. I am still um, going through the inventory, but where I'm at now, I'm close to $10,000. The store owner estimates the stolen items to be worth around $10,000, with some wigs exceeding $500 each. This is a significant setback for the nearly two-year-old business founded by Sherelle Thompson and her husband with the aim of providing opportunities for their teenage daughters them an opportunity at entrepreneurship, start from the ground up and own something, right? So we went out on this venture. Unfortunately, this is not the first incident. A year ago, three individuals stole merchandise and pepper sprayed Miss Thompson's daughter during a similar crime. And my daughter faced trauma after that. We had to get her therapy to get past that. You can accomplish your dreams. You can, if you set your mind to it and you commit and you're dedicated, you can get it done. But I imagine they probably learned, unfortunately, a couple other mm -hmm. things too. Yeah, they, they've, they've learned how to be defensive, <laughs> suspicious, um, scared. <laughs> I mean, just everybody's a suspect at this point. And, and that is the total opposite of what we wanted to create, the environment we wanted to create when we opened this store. I, I just don't know it. How we'll move forward. Oh my God. The police are currently investigating the latest theft. Miami police released surveillance footage of a man suspected of repeatedly stealing electronic clippers from a Sally Beauty supply store in Midtown Miami. The thefts occurred on August 18th and 22nd. The subject appears to be a black male, medium built. It does appear that he has facial hair. One time before, he, he is seen wearing a black polo shirt with jean shorts, and then the second time, he's wearing a white t-shirt with some sort of design and jean shorts as well. According to police, the suspect enters the store during the afternoon and heads directly to the clipper section. He places them in a bag and leaves without paying. Previously, the store lacked surveillance equipment, but newly installed cameras capture this incident. Police believe this is not the first time the suspect has targeted this store and are investigating the possibility of similar theft at other Midtown businesses. Our detectives are currently trying to investigate this case and locate this individual because apparently he has done this numerous times before. However, due to the fact there was no surveillance installed at that time, he was not captured in the past. Our detectives are working around the clock to identify this subject. Uh, one thing we do want store employees to know, if you observe the subject, walk into your store or any subject at all and you catch them stealing, please do not come into close proximity to the subject because at the end of the day, you do not know if they're armed or if they're willing to harm you. We do advise that you get a detailed description of the subject and immediately contact police. The investigation is ongoing and apprehending the suspect is a priority for Miami PD. The purpose of the stolen clippers remains unknown. Surveillance footage from a beauty supply store near Delane, Florida captured two women on Friday, January 16, 2010. The women browsed the store similar to other customers, but investigators believe their behavior changed upon noticing the security camera. This video was released by local news outlets in an effort to identify the robbery suspects. Authorities reported that 20-year-old Maisha Williams voluntarily visited the DeLand Police Department on Tuesday night, January 20th, 2010, to inquire about the news footage showing her at the recently robbed store. Williams denied involvement. However, the Volusia County Sheriff's Office determined there was sufficient evidence for her arrest. According to investigators, the video shows Williams threatening the store clerk with a weapon and demanding money. She was charged with strong-arm robbery and retail theft.
Miss Williams, a DeLand resident, will be held at the Volusia County Branch Jail in Daytona Beach. Investigators determined that the other woman in the video left the store before the robbery and therefore was not charged. Four individuals allegedly used a stolen car from Lorden to ram into a smoke shop, Smoke Bazaar, on Black Lake Road in Springfield. Surveillance footage shows the suspects wearing blackface masks, with one wearing a green jacket identified after slipping during the incident. Here to be young, maybe juveniles who committed this crime, and this crime is more than just one crime. We have individuals that stole two cars, individuals that broke into a business and stole merchandise. Lieutenant Jim Curry of Fairfax County Police reported that the suspects stole approximately $200 worth of merchandise before fleeing in another stolen vehicle. It's a lot of damage. Uh, unfortunately, uh, an owner who has a business he's trying to operate and uh, a lot of damage and some property that he's gonna have to try and recruit. The damage to the storefront was significant, but repairs were completed quickly. While skid marks remain, the storefront appears largely unharmed. Fairfax County Police are investigating a potential connection between this incident and recent burglaries targeting smoke and vape shops. Lieutenant Curry emphasized that a vehicle being used to ram a store is a concerning escalation in these types of crimes. I can't think of the last time something like this has occurred, um, but certainly it's, it's unique. Surveillance footage from Jewels by Allen, a jewelry store located in the Park Place Shopping Center on Jamboree in Irvine, California, captured a brazen robbery. The video shows three suspects wielding sledgehammers, smashed display cases, and steel jewelry. They quickly stuffed the stolen items into plastic trash cans. The sound was deafening. Deafening. It was amazing. The incident occurred on August of 23, and according to reports, the owner, employees, and customers were present when the suspects entered the store. This guy walk, runs in, black, total black, black hoodie, black mask, and he has a sledgehammer with a big um, black bucket, banging and shouting very loudly. Security footage reveals two additional suspects, matching the description, entering shortly after and participating in the theft. One employee reportedly called 911 while others sought cover. In approximately one and a half minutes, the suspects stole nearly $1 million worth of jewelry. I didn't think they were going to break the glass here because they were run under it. So they're breaking the glass, all those glasses pouring on top of them. I was very concerned about their health. This is what's happening in Orange County. It used to ha happen in LA. You hear about it. Now in the past six months, I think this is probably, I don't know, eighth, ninth jewelry store that was hit. We got a huge problem. Irvine police suspect this group may be responsible for similar robberies and are investigating potential connections. It looks like these robberies are associated with two other robberies in Ontario and Downey. Uh, and what makes it unique is the tall kitchen-sized trash cans were also used in those robberies. On Friday, December 18th at approximately 1.03 a.m., officers from the 6th District and Gaithersburg Police Department responded to a nearby armed robbery at the McDonald's located at 465 N. Frederick Avenue. According to the investigation by major crimes detectives, a suspect approached a drive through window, brandished a weapon, and threatened an employee. The suspect demanded cash and stole a cash drawer from the open window before fleeing on foot towards Odendahl Avenue. A swift apprehension of the suspect by law enforcement remains a priority to ensure public safety. Surveillance footage from a Walmart store captured a man wielding a knife and shouting. While not making immediate threats, his actions created a tense situation. An identified customer, not a law enforcement officer, intervened and attempted to disarm the man. A struggle ensued, with the suspect resisting the customer's efforts. Another customer intervened using a store display stand to strike the suspect. This action disarmed him and brought him to the ground. Police officers arrived on the scene and apprehended the suspect. The quick actions of the customers potentially prevented the situation from escalating. I hate 
he had, had yeah, he had a knife. That's why they tried to get it from him. That's all. And he was saying he was gonna stab people because he. Shoplifting is a significant challenge for retailers like Walmart. In 2021, theft reportedly resulted in losses of approximately $93.9 billion. In this video clip, two Walmart employees apprehended a customer suspected of shoplifting. The customer reportedly refused to return the shopping cart and claimed to have a receipt for the items in it. However, upon retrieving the cart, the employees appeared to find no receipt. The customer left without further assistance. Security footage from September 2023 at a Walmart location captured a man, later identified as Gary Moultrie, inappropriately touching female customers without their consent. The store staff alerted the police, who reviewed the footage with them. Officers then attempted to apprehend Moultrie at the store. Moultrie fled on foot, claiming his daughter needed help nearby. Despite his claims, officers pursued him due to the seriousness of the initial offense. Just walk in. I'll take a picture of her. Yeah, we'll take a picture of her first car. Alright, yeah. Oh, he's done. Move, move. He's coming outside. Gentle merchandise. I've got him at the garden center. Stop! 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 Stop. My daughter is like right there and she needs some help. Now. Glasses, black shirt, camo pants, she black shoes. Now. He's running back the other way. All right, he's, go he's going back into Walmart. He's running around the garden center. If I can get someone else over here, stop right there! After a chase, officers used a taser to subdue Moultrie and place him under arrest. During the arrest, Moultrie reportedly destroyed his phone, possibly in an attempt to eliminate evidence. Moultrie was subsequently charged for his actions. A jewelry store at the Irvine Spectrum was robbed on the afternoon of October 17, 2022. A man grabbed an expensive necklace while pretending to look at it and fled the store. Employees were unable to stop him, and he escaped in a gray Toyota Corolla, likely a model between 2012 and 2018. The Irvine Police Department released video and photos from the incident on social media. Thanks to a tip received on October 26, they were able to identify and arrest the suspect. Fred M. Clave Ishan Benjamin Anderson, a 20-year-old resident of Menifee. Benjamin Anderson now faces charges of robbery and burglary. 
A shocking robbery unfolded in Lenexa on none other than Super Bowl Sunday. Two armed suspects targeted a local GameStop, turning a fun day for many into a frightening experience. Just a few hours before the Super Bowl, tied him up, drug him to the back of the store. Um, one of the other clerks was actually slammed to the ground, so this is a very violent robbery. The brazen act involved the robbers tying up employees before grabbing armfuls of video game consoles. One suspect even feigned being a customer before brandishing a weapon. I think those were Series X's and other PS5's. From the video that I saw on Facebook, it looks like they knew exactly what they wanted, what they were looking for, and they went for the highest, most expensive thing they have at GameStop. Um, most of the kind of stuff that they would be getting They'd almost have to sell on like eBay, uh, Craigslist, Amazon, something like that. It's going to raise a lot of red flags to have the same item, a bunch of them, especially on something that's in short supply and expensive. And the fact that they probably are willing to take far less than what it's worth, that's going to raise a lot of questions for while Sylvester Pickett, a 30-year-old from Kansas City, Kansas, has been apprehended and faces a hefty bond, the search continues for his accomplice. Police released surveillance footage featuring Pickett, identified by a hand tattoo. The second suspect, described as slender and clad in dark clothing, remains unidentified. Authorities are urging the public to come forward with any information that might help in their investigation. Adding another layer to this disturbing event, a customer who entered the store during the robbery was also held captive by the perpetrators. The total haul is estimated at $10,000 in cash and gaming equipment. On May 22, 2019, a robbery took place at the Village Pantry, located on 38th Street in Marion. Surveillance footage captured the suspect, who concealed his face with a bandana, sunglasses, and a baseball cap. The video shows the suspect demanding the clerk open the cash register and surrender the money. Thankfully, there were no reports of injuries during the incident. Surveillance footage from a Walmart store captured a potential case of internal theft. The video appears to show an employee, possibly working with an accomplice, scanning and bagging merchandise without completing a purchase. Walmart management repeatedly identified the individuals involved and contacted the police. The people in the video, Sasha De La Cruz and Ricardo De La Cruz Padilla, have not been charged with a crime and the investigation is ongoing. Three individuals were apprehended in Hialeah on Thursday, April 5th, 2018, following a morning armed robbery. The incident occurred around 9.45 a.m. in the 800 block of Southeast 9th Avenue. The victim, while entering her car, was confronted by three men who emerged from two Nissan vehicles. With a weapon pointed, they stole her purse before escaping in their cars. Investigators were able to link a fingerprint left on the victim's car to 17-year-old Mike King Green, identifying him as one of the shooters. Surveillance footage captured Lavaris Champion, 25, and Diedrich Andrews, 21, using the stolen credit card at a gas station roughly 15 minutes after the robbery. This evidence led to their capture later that night by detectives and a SWAT team at Green's residence. Both getaway vehicles were seized by authorities. The victim's purse and credit card were found in one of the cars, along with two firearms. While Champion and Andrews currently face charges related to the stolen credit card and resisting arrest, detectives believe they were also directly involved in the robbery. Further investigation is underway to solidify this connection. Washington Square Mall's Macy's Department Store was the target of a smash-and-grab robbery on February 3, 2021, as captured on surveillance video. The footage shows a male suspect approaching the jewelry counter around 8 p.m. After a brief look, he shatters the display case and steals over two dozen gold necklaces, estimated at $30,000 in value. Fleeing the scene, the suspect encountered an employee who gave chase towards the parking structure. The thief threatened the employee with an accomplice armed with a weapon, forcing the employee to stop. Thankfully, no injuries were reported. An employee at the counter provided a description of the suspect, a white male approximately 6 feet tall with an average build and blonde hair. During the robbery, he wore a black sweatshirt, a baseball cap, and a black mask with writing. The investigation to this incident is ongoing. 
Surveillance video released by Auburn Hills Police shows a shoplifting incident at a local Home Depot. The suspect, a white male between 40 to 50, stole over $1,000 in merchandise. During the escape, a customer with a CPL concealed pistol license intervened, firing shots at the getaway vehicle, possibly a small dark Kia SUV with a flat rear tire, driven by an African-American male in his 40s. Thankfully, there were no injuries. The best thing anybody that witnesses or thinks they're witnessing a crime could do is be a good eyewitness for us, gather information, write down information, um, give it to the officers when they arrive or contact the police department when they see something happen. And we really want to, you know, when people see something happening, they want we really want them to contact us so that we can take action. The last sighting of the vehicle was eastbound on Brown Road near Atlantic Boulevard. The suspect was last seen wearing a black shirt with a yellow writing and a black ball cap. The investigation is ongoing, including whether the customer who fired the shots will face charges. A disgruntled Walmart employee, Hector Albermudez, 29 years old, caused roughly $2,000 in damages after being suspended. Security footage captured Bermudez throwing merchandise off shelves and onto the floor as he exited the store. The reason for Bermudez's suspension remains unclear. Store management declined to comment on the incident, and Bermudez could not be reached for a side of the story. Yo. Yeah. Yo, that is destroying Walmart. Yo, yo. Yo, yo. He is wild. Yo, Jeff, what's good with your boy, man? Oh. What happened? What the happened, George? George. Yo. Bermudez now faces charges of criminal mischief with damage and defined trespassing. Milwaukee gas station surveillance footage serves as a stark reminder of the consequences of trying to flee the police. A misdemeanor can quickly escalate into a felony with the potential for serious injuries. The video shows a car careening into the station after a suspected police chase. In the foreground, a customer seemingly unaware of the unfolding drama exits a convenience store and hastily jumps back in their car. Thankfully, a gas station employee is able to extinguish a fire ignited by the crash, preventing further damage. This incident highlights the importance of cooperating with law enforcement and the unpredictable dangers of high-speed chases. Surveillance footage from Aventura Mall captures three individuals, believed to be men dressed as women, stealing fragrances. The suspect is described as one wearing a white bandana and light blue crop top with black capri pants, another in a gray sweatshirt, and a third in a white tank top and gray shorts, targeted a perfume counter.
After store security noticed the theft, they attempted to apprehend the suspects, who deployed pepper spray to escape. Aventura police released descriptions and footage of the suspects, leading to a traffic stop by Lauder Hill police. The driver, identified as a 21-year-old Armani Green, fled, resulting in a brief pursuit and minor crash. Green and another suspect were apprehended. A third male passenger was not charged. They're thieving. They're thieving in skirts or in pants, one way or the other. It is horrendous. Please, people, pay attention to what's going on. Don't be soft on crime. This incident highlights the collaborative efforts of Aventura and Lauderhill police in apprehending the suspects. St. Mary's police are searching for a suspect involved in a recent GameStop burglary. Surveillance footage shows the suspect sporting an unusual disguise, a plastic bag from bottled water packaging, in an attempt to conceal his identity. The department shared the video on Facebook, where it has garnered significant attention, with hopes of identifying the culprit. A disturbing video has emerged depicting a Walmart in a state of utter disarray. Alarms blare in the background as the footage pans across a scene reminiscent of an apocalypse. Shelves are empty, merchandise is scattered across the floor, and broken products litter the aisles. The side of a supermarket ravaged in such a way is undeniably unsettling. AJ Alexander's restaurant in Cordova, Tennessee, was the target of an armed robbery, leaving the community shaken. Surveillance footage released by police shows the frightening incident unfolding. The manager, working late to prepare for renovations, was approached by a masked suspect, wielding a weapon in a white F-150 truck as he moved his car in the back parking lot. I'm shocked because that's a top class uh Top drawer restaurant. The video depicts the manager being forced back inside the restaurant with a weapon pointed by the suspect, who was clad in a hoodie and shorts. Residents in the area expressed their shock and dismay over the incident, unaccustomed to such violence at a popular neighborhood restaurant. Oh my goodness, that's terrible. That's terrible. The footage continues as the suspect, carrying a bag, walks through the kitchen. In a desperate attempt to de-escalate the situation, the manager begged the suspect to take whatever he wanted, pleading for his safety. He then opened the restaurant's safe and surrendered $6,000 before the suspect fled in the white pickup truck. Thankfully, the manager sustained no physical injuries during the robbery. However, the emotional impact is undeniable, affecting both the manager and the wider community. It has gotten worse, I guess, as um, the neighborhood has changed. More people are moving out this way. Um, it definitely has gotten, you know, a little worse. It doesn't matter about the money. It's, it, it's whether he had a fatality or not. This is the times that we live in. It's 2023, so you have to be careful. You just have to be careful wherever you are. You can never take your safety for granted. While both the restaurant and the manager declined to comment, Memphis police are actively investigating the incident.
A brazen thief stole a product in an employee's wallet from Ferndale's BDT smoke shop. Shocked by the surveillance footage, employee Evan Brabander watched as the thief reached behind the counter and took synthetic urine. Moments later, the same person snagged his wallet containing nearly $300. Finally, when he kind of asked me about something, I hadn't realized that he had already grabbed what he was asking me about. Soon enough, as a couple more customers came in, diverted my attention, he made a beeline for my jacket, grabbed the wallet, and then just kind of said his goodbyes and booked it out of here. However, the story took an unexpected turn. The thief's family contacted the store, apologizing and revealing the thefts stemmed from an addiction. Upon hearing this, shop owner Jeff Spaulding made a surprising decision. He opted to forgo pressing charges on one condition. The stolen items and products should be returned. We're extremely humbled that his family cares enough about him to actually contact us and try to make the situation right. Spalding, familiar with the struggles of addiction through his cannabis business, felt empathy for the situation. He didn't want to go make things worse for anyone involved, especially the thief's family, who reached out to rectify the situation. If we can get him into a rehab facility first, over jail, that would uh, make us much happier. At Spalding's request, the thief's identity is blurred to protect their family's privacy. Even more remarkably, the stolen wallet, money, and additional funds for the product were all returned. Surveillance footage from December 29, 2023 captured a concerning incident at a store. The video shows a 64-year-old man, later identified as Pablo Pantes Hernandez, grabbing the hand of a 4-year-old child and attempting to walk away. Thankfully, a family member intervened and pulled the child back to safety before Hernandez could leave the store. The authorities were alerted and Hernandez was apprehended at his residence later that same day. It's important to know that Hernandez has a prior history involving a similar charge of false imprisonment of a minor. In that case, the charge was reportedly reduced to a misdemeanor battery. The current incident highlights the need for vigilance and immediate action in such situations. A woman's desire for a wig took a dangerous turn in Baton Rouge on January 13, 2022. Jania Watley allegedly attempted to steal a wig from a beauty supply store on Plank Road. Instead of paying, she grabbed the wig and shoved it into her backpack. When employees confronted her, Watley reportedly escalated the situation by pulling a weapon and firing a shot into the air. Despite the reckless act, police were able to apprehend Wadley thanks to a Crime Stoppers tip. 
Surveillance footage captured a frightening scene at a Quincy liquor store. A robber brandished a large knife, believed to be a 10-inch carving knife, and threatened the store clerk, Paul Shaw, while demanding money. And he came and he ran and he said, give me all the money, give me all the money. He came with the big knife. So I was very scared and I gave all the money. Despite the ordeal, Paul returned to work the next day, shaken but determined. Throughout his three years managing the store, he had never encountered such a situation. He don't say nothing. He said, I need money, I need money, that's it. Give me all, give me all. Uh, I don't know, I don't, I don't believe it's happening in this neighborhood. This is very nice neighborhood. Police are searching for the masked suspect who fled with stolen cash. They acknowledge the challenge but hope someone recognizes a detail, either from the clothing or the robber's voice, that can aid in identification. A video circulating online shows a disagreement between a teenager and a Walmart employee. In the footage, a 15-year-old boy films the employee who appears to be asking him to stop. The teenager argues that he can't be stopped because of his age and threatens legal action. The situation escalates when the employee takes the phone to stop the filming. Don't, don't take pictures of me. I'll break your camera. Mm, yes, I will. I doubt it. I'm 15. You're going I, to jail. I don't care if you're 15. You're going to jail. You, re you respect me. All right, and you respect me. Oh, hey! Ricky! 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 Sir, you cannot touch a kid. I believe or otherwise I will go to police. Give me I my will camera. Call the police. Give me my camera. You don't record me. I was not recording you. Yes, you were. It was. The video raises questions about privacy rights, appropriate behavior in stores, and how to handle such situations. Should the employee have been filmed? Was the employee justified in taking the phone? This surveillance footage from a Walmart security camera is part of the investigation into the disappearance and murder of an 80-year-old girl. This video shows the victim with a man later identified as Donald Smith. According to news reports, Smith befriended the victim and her mother at a different store before accompanying them to Walmart. The victim was later reported missing and Smith was apprehended. Walmart. I'm in traffic and taken. What do you mean? Taken by a stranger. I can't find her. I don't want him to kill her. I don't, I don't want to be one of those parents that are going through this. I feel responsible because I, I, I told him when I first met him that I I was a little bit scared of him because I thought he was waiting to rob us outside the Dollar General because he was just standing there. And he said, well, if you really want that dress, then I'll go get it for her. I should have told him no. Uh, my, my, my girls need clothes so bad, why I let him do it, but I'm so sorry. Now these ladies have to put all the clothes back in the store. Donald Smith was convicted of the crimes and sentenced to death. Chaos erupted at a Nashville Michael Kors on Sunday, November 12th. Surveillance footage shows two thieves working together to steal a significant amount of luxury merchandise. The suspects, a man and a woman, spent about five minutes browsing the crowded store before making their move. The man was described as wearing blue denim jacket with a New York Yankees logo, a white beanie hat, blue jeans, and a surgical mask. His accomplice wore a black Victoria's Secret top. In a brazen attempt, the duo grabbed numerous bags and jackets. When a store employee tried to stop them from leaving, they shoved their aside and escaped into the parking lot. In a scene straight out of a crime movie, undercover officers apprehended a suspect, Ramirez, at a Montebello gas station. Surveillance led officers to follow Ramirez, who was unaware he was surrounded even before pulling into the gas station.
Panicked, Ramirez attempted to reverse his vehicle but ended up hitting under cover and civilian cars. A shootout ensued as Ramirez drove erratically through the parking lot, nearly striking an officer. Despite the chaos, he managed to escape and flee the scene. Thankfully, officers later located Ramirez in a parking garage. Weakened by a shot wound, he offered no resistance and was apprehended. This incident serves as a chilling reminder of the dangers faced by law enforcement and the importance of staying clear of such situations if you witness them unfolding. A Taco Bell drive through became the site of a deadly shooting after police responded to a report of a man passed out behind the wheel while holding a weapon. Officers approached the vehicle and according to reports, the man made a move for his weapon. Police body cameras capture the incident, which shows officers discharging their firearms, resulting in the man's death. Malfunction at a Winter Haven Walmart self-checkout register sparked a theft scheme involving multiple individuals. Security footage shows a group exploiting the issue to steal nearly $1,100 over 30 minutes. The incident began with a simple purchase by a man with a right shoulder tattoo. However, when the machine mistakenly dispensed a $20 bill instead of a $5 bill, he took advantage of the error and notified his companions. Police believe up to eight people participated in the scheme. Immediately, you see them starting to come in one by one, grabbing one item, whether it's a, a, a cold drink or a candy bar, a pack of gum. They would insert money, trigger a forced change request for $5, and receive a $20 bill instead. And they put in enough money in order to force the machine to give them a $5 change out. However, that $5 change ended up being $20. The video even shows children involved, sparking concern from parents. That's terrible. I mean, to get young children involved in that, you can't do that. If it happened to me, um, I worked retail and sales, I would give it back. Despite a Walmart associate assisting with a trash can liner change, the malfunction remained unnoticed. The group casually walked out of the store after roughly 20 minutes. Authorities are now searching for the individuals involved. They face potential charges of theft and contributing to the delinquency of a minor. Winter Haven police encourage anyone with information to come forward. High quality surveillance footage is available to aid in identification. A video has surfaced showing a customer behaving inappropriately in a store. The customer is seen displaying racist views towards the Black Lives Matter movement, including damaging merchandise and making disrespectful comments. This type of behavior is unacceptable. As an employee, the most important thing is to prioritize your safety and well-being. Disturbing footage from a Miami McDonald's shows a customer inflicting severe burns on a worker. The video captures the employee handing over a coffee cup, but instead of receiving it, the customer violently slaps it away. The scalding hot liquid spills, causing burns to the worker's hands, arms, and even face.
Incredibly, the reason for this attack is reportedly a one cent discrepancy in the price of the customer's breakfast order. This act of aggression resulted in potentially permanent injuries for the McDonald's employee. Rice Lake police responded to a 911 hang-up call, where a woman reported her estranged husband showed up intoxicated. While she was in threat, she clarified she wasn't involved. Officers located the suspect, Josh, at a gas station. He locked himself in his vehicle to resist arrest, despite attempts to de-escalate the situation. I'm going to separate myself from him, but it's very difficult when you're married to someone who's a narcissist and alcoholic, and I have PTSD from prior domestic abuse issues and I just... Well, with nothing physical happening and everything calm right now. Is that him? That's the white car? I don't know if that's him or not. Yeah, I... I don't know if that's him. Did you drive a white car? Yes, like that. Like that. Okay. That's a beauty. Yeah. You roll your window down? Hey man. Hey Josh. Hey Josh Springer. Oh, we just got called to... Uh, spoke with, I believe it's your wife. You guys are separated right now. She said that there was a little incident that happened. And then seen you drive by, so we figured we'd stop over here and talk to you. And, Get your side of the story of what's going on tonight. Step out of the car, Josh. Get out of the car. Josh, get out of the vehicle. Josh, unlock the vehicle. Yeah, you can finish it outside. Step out of the vehicle now. Josh, step out of the vehicle. Otherwise, I'm going to break this window and drag you out of the car, okay? Get out of the car. Get out of the car. Get out of the car. It's not that hard to not resist, is it? I'm not resisting. As a last resort, officers were forced to break the car window to extract Josh. He was then subdued and arrested for driving under the influence with a revoked license and disorderly conduct. This incident highlights the dangers of drunk driving and the importance of complying with law enforcement instructions. This Walmart surveillance footage captures another incident of merchandise damage. A woman disrupts the store by knocking over wine displays, causing substantial breakage. Onlookers observe the situation but don't intervene. It's unclear why she's upset, but the person filming stops recording as she approaches them, suggesting a potential emotional outburst. A surveillance video from a pet store has captured unsettling footage. The video shows a man walking through an aisle, seemingly unassuming. However, as two customers move on, the man appears to engage in an act of unwanted sniffing. 
This behavior is a clear violation of personal space and boundaries. It's important to remember that such actions are not only inappropriate, but can also be considered harassment. A disturbing incident at a Walmart Canada store has come to light. A man was falsely accused of theft, detained by security, and ultimately released without charges. A customer who had just spent $200 on groceries willingly presented his receipt as proof of purchase. Despite this, security guards requested he remove his jacket, which he politely declined. This resulted in his arrest, captured on video by another customer. No, we're gonna put, we're gonna just take it to court. It's gonna be great when he has nothing and you're all embarrassed. You guys are gonna look stupid when he has nothing. No, let him, let him arrest you. Let him arrest you. It's okay. It's okay. Let him arrest you. Yeah, I'm gonna film. Watch. Do you have any? Can I film though? I can't film? I'd like, I'd like to film. Thank you. I am, I'm filming. I got a nice clear shot. <laughs> Look at all that food. Shit, he's got so much food on him. Jeez. Oh, back to training school for you, officer. No, this is for our court case. This is for our court case. This is for our court case. What's your name? Sorry, I want to know your name. 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 Please, give me your name, both of you. I want your BSP. I'm going to take a picture. That's my friend. No, it's okay. I want his name. That's it. That's it. I'm allowed to have your name. You a private property, and you, you don't have to. My, I want to film my friend. Okay, no, it's not. Hey, so he's an adult. Can you he's go? He's an adult. He's my okay, friend. Also, okay. he needs a witness. Okay, can you? He has go? a witness. Okay. Are you here for swapping? I need to be here for a witness for okay. him. No, no. Once she tell me when. Once she tell me when. Go. Sir, I, I, I want to be a witness for my friend. This is a private I want to be a witness. It's a private property, okay? This is not private. We, we shop private. here. It we shop private. here. I just shop here okay. now. Okay. I'm a client. I'm a client. I'm a client. You saw me. I showed you my receipt. I'm a client. Okay? Refund your items. You're handcuffing an innocent man. Innocent man. I, I want to see how long they keep you in those cuffs. That's very painful. That hurts a lot. It's important to clarify that the second person arrested at the end is believed to be an actual shoplifter apprehended by police. There seems to be confusion between the two situations. That's good. I check camera. I did not get you on camera. I call police. You can call police. That's okay. This is just wild. Damn. No. I'm I'm allowed no. to film this. No. I'm not filming you. But I've been about the film. So I'm allowed to film no. this, yes. No. Yes, I have the right to no. film this. I have the right to film no. this. No, it's private place. Listen. No. no, I have the right no. to film this. No. This is a police interaction. No. It's please no. I don't believe you. Ask no. the police. It's please. Go no. tell the police no. on me. I don't care. You, no. you don't have the right to get in my person. Get it's away from me. Stay away from me. The person filming stopped due to misinformation from a security guard who claimed the police ordered the arrest. The police, upon arrival, immediately released the man and clarified he was never under arrest. However, the ordeal wasn't over. The wrongly accused customer remained handcuffed in a police car for a full hour before being released without any charges filed. This incident raises concerns about Walmart Canada's security procedures and highlights the need for better training to avoid such situations. Are you gonna arrest me? No. For what? Stop. Stop. I have the right to come. I have the right. Yeah. Really? Okay. The police is there. You don't have the right to arrest me, sir. No. They can tell you if they, if they want me arrested. I, if I, I, I did not commit a. Security footage captured the suspect inside Capriotti's, a sandwich shop in Chatsworth. After placing an order, he threatened the cashier with a weapon, demanding money from the register. Open it up. Open the, register. Open the, register. the frightened cashier couldn't open the register, prompting the suspect to yell at another employee. And he's like, "Can you please open? Can you please open to the person?" And she was like, uh, "Like in shock." So. And then he, he, he brings the gun, you know, he puts the gun and he says, please open the register. He eventually fled with around $500. Brenda Torres, the owner, wasn't present during the robbery incident. I'm very upset. I'm very um, stressed. I'm very, like, 
scared, you know, uh, because now they, they, they just scared to come to work. This isn't the first time the store has been targeted. Twice before, the plate glass window was shattered. And my biggest fear is my employees, you know, the safety of my people. According to data from the LAPD's Devonshire Division, where Capriati's is located, the number of robberies has remained relatively stable over the past five years, except for a spike in 2020. While employees immediately contacted the police after the armed robbery, tourists expressed disappointment about their 45-minute response time. This happened at 8.10 and they come at 8.55. So it's like what it needs to happen. They need to like fire a gun so they can come right away. This is not okay. The shop opened just before the pandemic, a period when many businesses struggled. Now the owner's main concern is employee safety. Surveillance video captured a tense moment at Jimmy John's restaurant in Kansas City. A customer approached the counter, placed an order, and then pulled out a weapon. Despite the threat, the cashier remained remarkably calm. The footage shows the cashier removing his gloves and opening the register while the suspect hesitated. He then calmly handed over the money before closing the register, seemingly unfazed by the situation. Since its release by Kansas City Police, the video has garnered significant attention, exceeding 5 million views. The cashier's composure under pressure has sparked online discussions. In February 2016, an armed robbery occurred at the Stop Quick Convenience Store. Surveillance footage captured a tense situation at CNC Beauty Supply Shop in southwest Birmingham. Two masked men with weapons entered the store, confronting a customer and a sales associate at the counter. The customer was understandably forced to the ground. Craig Smith, the store owner, was monitoring the events and full from a security camera in a back room. Seeing his customer in danger, he waited for an opportunity and fired a single shot to deter the robbers. The suspects retaliated, firing back at Smith. Fortunately, none of the bullets struck him. One bullet, however, hit a door hinge, highlighting the dangerous nature of the situation. The authorities were likely alerted by the firing or by the store's security system. Police would have responded to the scene as quickly as possible to secure the area, apprehend the suspects, and investigate the crime. Smith, shaken but unharmed, displayed the damage from the armed confrontation, including bullet holes in the store and even a mannequin's head. Despite this harrowing experience, Smith vowed to remain open, refusing to let the robbers win. A YouTube video shared by Cheyenne M.M. captured a tense situation at a beauty supply store. The woman filming was paying at the register when she noticed a commotion. The store owner and a young woman were apparently arguing over suspected shoplifting. The owner's husband joined the situation to calm things down. <laughs> What are you doing? I'm telling her. What are you doing? She's f***ing touching me. I have money. I don't know why she put her hands up. I don't know what's going on either, Mama. What are you doing? Why are you I'm recording it, though. Why are you touching me? I had money. Why are you touching me? She touched me. No, why are you touching me? 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 I have money. What's your problem? No, she... My mom's on the phone with the police. The authorities were called to report the incident. Not long after, they let the woman go. I have money. 
behind me. She, she grabbed me. Just, just why. empty out everything you have, Mama. Have just show them. Just show them, Mama, so that you go, you could get. You know what I mean? I have nothing. Look. I she doesn't have anything else. In my purse, never. Okay. She hit me. Okay. That's why. That we understand that, Mama. But just show them what you got. I don't have anything. I never put anything. She doesn't have anything. It's okay. Okay. I don't have anything. She put her hands on me. Fuck, man. I don't have anything. She doesn't have anything else. Yeah, just show, just show them that part, oh Mama. Fuck, you guys should get sued for this, dude. I'm recording it. I don't have anything. Fuck. I'm recording it. Despite the filmer's neutral stance, the incident escalated. The couple was apprehended shortly after at a nearby CVS, suspected of attempting another theft. The boyfriend was allegedly carrying items believed to be from the beauty supply store, which likely led to their arrest. The Riverside County Sheriff's Department released footage of an incident involving a suspect and officers at a Bell Taco drive through After removing the suspect from their vehicle, a confrontation occurred. The suspect attempted to flee the scene in their vehicle, striking parked cars. I'm with you, I'm with you. When unable to escape, the suspect put the vehicle in gear, causing an officer to be struck and fall down an embankment. A nearby car dislodged by the suspect's vehicle, then rolled onto the officer. While pinned under the car, the officer discharged their firearm towards the suspect's vehicle. The suspect then attempted to flee the scene, with other officers discharging their firearms in an apparent attempt to disable the vehicle. Surveillance footage captured a disturbing incident at M Beauty Cosmetics on March 11. The video shows a robbery attempt where four female suspects attempt to flee the store. In a shocking turn of events, the store manager bravely attempts to stop them, but is shoved aside by the suspects. In accordance with YouTube's policies, we've chosen to blur out this particular scene to comply with community standards. Tragically, the manager is dragged outside by her hair and thrown to the ground. She attempts to rise but suffers a medical episode and collapses. Another employee immediately calls for help. The 32-year-old victim is currently in critical condition, having sustained significant trauma. Doctors are reportedly evaluating the possibility of a heart transplant. The victim's boyfriend, Robert Marquez, reveals this isn't the first time the store has been targeted by theft. I was assaulting my, the love of my life, and she, in the process, it was raining, everything was slippery, and they, in the process, when they attacked her, she, they got thrown to the ground, and my, my partners had heart issues before. The authorities are actively searching for the four female suspects, who now face attempted murder charges due to the severity of the manager's injuries. On October 18, 2023, Terry McAnthony McMillan Jr., a 26-year-old resident of Durham, was captured on security footage pushing aside an elderly Home Depot employee during a theft incident. McMillan Jr. was observed exiting the store's garden section with a shopping cart containing three pressure washers when the employee, identified as Gary Rasser, approached him. In accordance with YouTube's policies, 
we've chosen to blur out this particular scene to comply with community standards. Surveillance footage released by the store indicates that McMillan Jr. forcibly pushed Razor, causing him to fall to the ground. Razor succumbed to complications from his injuries on November 30. He had celebrated his 83rd birthday while hospitalized prior to his passing. The North Carolina medical examiner classified Razor's death as a homicide. McMillan Jr. was subsequently arrested and charged with first-degree murder and robbery. He is currently being detained without bond. An Arizona Wendy's employee, Antoine Kendrick, faces second-degree murder charges. The incident began when a 67-year-old customer complained about his order. According to Prescott Valley Police, surveillance footage captured Kendrick punching the customer, causing him to fall and hit his head. The critically injured man died in the hospital 10 days later. The guttural reaction and you feel, you feel pain for what's happening and you feel pain watching that video. Kendrick, initially charged with aggravated assault, now faces a more serious accusation. Thanks for watching. Stay vigilant, friends.